During World War II, the Netherlands employed a plethora of domestically designed aircraft in their air force. Most of these aircraft were the product of the Fokker Company's efforts during the interwar years. During World War I, the Fokker Company gained immense experience in aircraft production by producing hundreds of aircraft for the German Empire. After Germany was banned from having an air force due to the 1919 Treaty of Versailles, the Fokker Company focused solely on producing aircraft for the Dutch Air Force. The C-5 was designed in 1924 as a reconnaissance and light bomber biplane. It was based on the older Fokker D-7 fighter from 1918. A total of five variants were produced, as follows. First came the C-5A, a reconnaissance plane, of which only one prototype was ever made. Next, 18 C-5B planes were made, which was also a reconnaissance plane. The C-5C was a ground attack aircraft, and six were put into Dutch service. Next, the C-5D functioned as a recon plane, fighter, and bomber. Finally, the C-5E was a good ground attack aircraft. It could carry a maximum of 200 kilograms of bombs. 18 C-5Es were used in the Dutch Air Force, and various foreign nations purchased or produced a licensed copy of this variant. All of these variants were very similar to each other, but varied in exact dimensions and combat roles. The C-5 was designed to use a variety of engines, and some examples include the Hispano Suiza, Lorraine Dietrich, Bristol Jupiter, and Packard Liberty. The Netherlands produced 67 C-5s domestically between 1926 and 1934. In 1936, they upgraded all planes by installing a 630 horsepower Rolls-Royce Kestrel engine, which was more powerful than any other engine on the plane before it. With it, the plane could go 160 miles per hour. This was a measure taken to modernize an already aging plane, and would ultimately remain extremely vulnerable to advanced German fighters during the German invasion of the Netherlands in May 1940. Armament on the plane was quite standard for the day, and was quite similar to the armament used on other planes of the early 1930s. It used two 7.9mm machine guns in the front of the plane, and one machine gun operated by the rear gunner. By May 1940, 34 C-5s were operational in Dutch service. By this point, they were very obsolete, and their slow speed made them easy prey for modern German planes. Despite their obsolescence, though, brave pilots saw some decent successes. They flew extremely close to the ground on their recon and bombing missions, giving this technique the nickname hedgehopping. 20 were destroyed in combat and 14 were captured on the ground by the Germans, who repurposed them as Luftwaffe training planes. While all of the C-5s in Europe had been destroyed or captured, some remained in service in the Dutch East Indies and continued to be used as training aircraft until 1942. A total of 955 C-5s had been produced by the Netherlands and by other countries that had licensed production rights. Other countries that produced or used the C-5 include Italy, Hungary, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, Switzerland, China, the Soviet Union, the United States, and Bolivia. The C-10 was intended to fill the roles of the aging C-5 plane, namely recon and light ground support. In 1933, the Dutch East Indies Air Force requested a new aircraft design to protect the colony, especially considering Japan initiated an aggressive foreign policy in the 1930s. The prototype flew in 1934, and mass production began in 1936. Overall, the C-10 satisfied the Dutch military leadership. However, a few major issues plagued the 640 horsepower Rolls-Royce engine, which was very similar to the one used in the C-5. Specifically, the carburetor was unreliable and needed to be replaced after only a few hours of flight. Even though the engine was very similar to the C-5's engine, the C-10 could reach far higher speeds. This can be attributed to the C-10's far lighter and more aerodynamic design. In fact, the C-10 weighed roughly 25% less than the C-5. When the engines were in order, the plane could reach speeds of 200 miles per hour. 
However, the C-10 was less agile than its predecessor due to a smaller wing surface area. The aircraft was armed with one forward-facing 7.9mm machine gun and another machine gun used by the rear gunner. The plane had modest bombing capabilities and could carry 200 kilograms of bombs. However, the C-10 had issues with its bombing release system, and the Dutch did not have a quality bomb rack by the late 1930s. Consequently, the bomb capacity was reduced. In addition, these faulty bomb racks presented the possibility of bombs not releasing when intended and getting stuck to the rack, limiting combat effectiveness. Another drawback was that obsolete radio communications in the C-10 meant that pilots often resorted to using hand signals while flying in the air. By May 1940, 20 C-10s were in service in Europe. Despite initial Luftwaffe attempts to wipe out the Dutch Air Force by bombing air bases, C-10s largely escaped damage while on the ground. During the German invasion, Germany tried to land paratroopers in major Dutch cities such as Rotterdam and The Hague. C-10 saw some success harassing German paratroopers after they landed and destroyed important infrastructure before the Germans could make use of it. In addition, they provided quality reconnaissance information to the Dutch military and launched a coordinated strike against German artillery positions outside Grebberg while flying close to the ground. But, due to their slow speed, many C-10s were destroyed in the war, while others escaped to Britain or were captured. Later in 1941, the Dutch East Indies had received 13 C-10s, but took them out of service due to their obsolescence. They were subsequently destroyed during the Japanese invasion of the Dutch East Indies. Finland was actually the largest user of C-10s, and they produced 35 licensed copies during the war and bought four more from the Netherlands. Finland used them against the Soviets in the Winter War and Continuation War, but faced heavy losses against modern Soviet fighters. The C-10 was a very competitive design when it was designed in 1933. However, their limited quantity and aging characteristics in 1940 rendered them vulnerable to German fighters. In 1926, the Dutch Navy requested the creation of a new float plane reconnaissance and bomber plane. This became the Fokker T-4, and it first flew in June 1927. The T-4 design was developed in the late 1920s with a metal fuselage and wooden wings. It had an open cockpit and three machine guns, one in the nose, one in the dorsal position, and one in the ventral position. In 1934, the Dutch Navy decided to increase the number of aircraft in the Dutch East Indies. By this time, the T-4 was obsolete, so designers decided to modify and upgrade it. The resulting variant would be called the T-4A, and unlike the base design, it was used in World War II. It featured a fully enclosed cockpit, enlarged wings for increased lift, increased fuel storage, and two powerful 768 horsepower Wright Cyclone engines. The prototype flew in 1935, and 12 were ultimately built from 1938 to 1940. The T-4A, with upgraded engines, could go up to 160 miles per hour, but now in the late 1930s, more was needed to maintain the competitiveness of the original 1920s design. T-4As served in search and rescue, transportation, convoy escort, and anti-submarine roles. It could carry up to 800 kilograms of bombs, three depth charges, or a large torpedo. T-4As took part in intense combat in late 1941 and early 1942 during the Japanese invasion of the Dutch East Indies. By this point, these planes were painfully obsolete, yet they made a valiant effort against the Japanese. One notable mission they conducted was attacking the Japanese battleship Kirishima in which an 125 kilogram bomb struck the ship, causing minor damage. In March 1942, with the Japanese takeover of the Dutch colony, the planes were intentionally destroyed by the Dutch to prevent their capture. The original Fokker T-4 design was well received in the mid-1920s, but one could only expect it to be unfit for a war that took place roughly 15 years after the original design was created. This, in tandem with their limited numbers, inhibited them from making a meaningful impact against their Japanese foes.
The development of the T-8 float plane began in 1937 to replace the aging T-4 and its A variant. The T-8 was intended to be a maritime recon and torpedo bombing plane, and production began in late 1938. The Netherlands produced 36 T-8s in three different types. The G variant, of which 19 were made, had a metal fuselage and wooden wings. The M variant, of which 12 were made, had an all-metal construction. Both of these aircraft were powered by two American 450 horsepower Wright Whirlwind engines, which were relatively weak by the standards of the late 1930s. Finally, the C variant was made of wood and metal, and was slightly larger overall. The largest change to the C variant was the installation of two 890 horsepower Bristol Mercury engines. Only five Type Cs were made, but it was by far the most sophisticated out of the three types. The C variant was initially intended to be sold to Finland, but the German invasion of the Netherlands prevented that. In addition, the Finns requested that the Netherlands make a land-based T-8, but these plans could not be finalized. The G and M variants could reach speeds of 177 miles per hour, and the C variant could reach speeds of 220 miles per hour. The Dutch planned to transfer most T-8s to the Dutch East Indies, but were unable to be transferred before war broke out. The T-8 required three crew members to operate it, a pilot, rear gunner, and bombardier. The pilot operated one forward-facing 7.9mm machine gun, which was placed on the left-hand wing. One, or sometimes two, machine guns were operated by the rear gunner to fend off attackers. The T-8 did not see any combat during the week-long German invasion of the Netherlands, but it did see service later in 1940 during the Battle of Britain. Nine T-8s managed to escape to Britain, and they were organized with other Dutch aircraft into what was called the No. 320 Dutch Royal Air Force Squadron in June. These Dutch aircraft were repainted with RAF markings but given a distinct Dutch badge as well. With their base located in South Wales, Dutch pilots conducted patrols over the English Channel in Atlantic, looking for submarines or providing convoy support. Many more captured T-8s saw service in the German military, where they mainly operated in the Mediterranean theater, hunting enemy submarines and providing air-to-sea rescue. By 1941, all Dutch T-8s were finally destroyed or rendered irreparable. Many of the planes discussed in this video were decent designs when they first entered service, but as war reached the Netherlands in May 1940, many times the planes could not compete with advanced German planes like the BF-109. Still, Dutch pilots put up a remarkable effort and scored numerous aerial and ground victories against the Germans in an attempt to repel them from their country. In part two of this series, I will cover more Dutch warplanes developed in the mid to late 1930s and used in World War II.